I, uh, I had promised a video blog um, about a couple things, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Um, and I have like a little script typed up, which I've never done before, but I thought it will help keep me from rambling or wandering. So if you see me looking away, that's what I'm doing. Um, so essentially, I just want to start out with a couple of basic things. This is going to be a blog video, video blog vlog about conversion and an incident that arose recently when a friend asked me a question. Um, so just first to start off, um, so regarding the convert and conversion, um, the common word that's used for the convert is ger. That's biblical Hebrew, ger, um, gerim is plural, and that generally refers to men, um, but it's sort of is used interchangeably with men and women. Um, in fact, I didn't even know what the female word for convert was until probably a couple months ago. Um, so I'm not even going to bother you with that. So gear is the word we're focusing on here. Um, gear, it derives from the word gar, uh, which actually I'm, is a verb that we just covered in um, my Hebrew class, but gar means to reside, to live. Um, and more in Biblical Hebrew it means to sojourn. Um, it's kind of a Biblical term. It means stranger. It's a stranger in a strange land. So you have a ger who is um, a stranger in a strange land of the Israelites. I also read his book on Orthodox conversion, and I think the book is important for anybody who's considering conversion, um, anybody who's curious about Jewish conversion um, should read it, simply because it gives the background of, of conversion, which a lot of books don't do. They just tell you what conversion is about, what it takes to convert, you know, what the practices are, the reactions, but it doesn't give you the background, the, the Torah background, the information from the rabbis, how it sort of develops into what it is today. So get that book. But what Rabbi Mark the Angel says is that Ger literally means stranger and refers to a non-Israelite who lived among the Israelite community. When the Torah commands compassion and equal justice for the Ger, it is referring to these strangers. But later rabbinic tradition interpreted the word to also mean pros proselyte. We usually don't use that word very much in Judaism because we're not a proselytizing religion. Um, Christianity, Islam, um, you know, the Mormons, it, it's very proselytizing trying to get people in. But Judaism, it, a long time ago, it was all about proselytizing for, for a brief period, but not so, not anymore at all, period. Um, so, uh, the rabbis of the Talmud use the word ger to refer to two different types of people. There's ger tzedek, meaning a righteous convert, and ger tushav, which means a non-Jewish inhabitant of the land of Israel who observes the Noahide laws, which are the seven laws of Noah. Um, so what we know of today as a Jewish convert, what I am, is a ger tzedek, someone who um, repents and goes through the process of conversion, etc. But it must be pointed out that in the Bible, no no policy for conversion. There's there's no mention of anything. It's all Talmudic, it's all the rabbis. Okay, so now that we've got that covered, um, a person who converts, a formal conversion, and, and I'm not going to get into the whole reform, orthodox, conservative, reconstructionist, liberal, conservative, you know, whatever. I'm not going to get into that whole argument. I'm just talking in general about a Jewish convert. Um, the rabbinic attitude is that after someone converts, they should not be considered a convert. Um, they're a full member of the Jewish community, and he or she should not be reminded of anything prior to that formal conversion. Um, now, it's naive to think that you're going to forget all about it, and that's sort of important into this whole discussion. Um, in Judaism, technically, there's no distinction made between a Jew by birth and a Jew by choice. Um, Jew by choice being a term that's frowned on by certain circles, accepted by others. Um, a lot of you probably know me from JewsByChoice.org, um, so I do identify as a Jew by choice. Though, you know, as, as you grow and you change and you become more comfortable in your Jewishness, it sort of becomes, you know, an irrelevant point. But anyway, um, the reasoning for this, the reasoning this is a law, um, is because of the notion that everyone has a Jewish soul and that those who are not born Jewish and elect to go through the conversion process have returned to the nature of their soul through teshuva, which is repentance or returning to God. Um, therefore, the person isn't known as a convert. They're just Jewish. They've always been Jewish. They just had to sort of 
you know, see that light in their soul, I guess, is the way that I would put it, for the story and what sort of led me to do this video blog. Um, a Jewish friend of mine had mentioned that his girlfriend, who converted, um, I'm not sure which movement she converted through, but that's irrelevant in this instance, was debating whether revealing to her workout buddy um, that she is not Jewish by birth, that she converted, um, and whether she should feel obligated to mention that to this friend. So I, you know, my first inclination is, you know, did it come up in conversation? Is there a reason that she would need to tell this friend this? Did they say something? Um, was something hinted at? And, and he essentially said no, um, and that nothing has really come up. And my, my answer is no. You know, why would you do that? It's sort of like, you know, you don't mention in casual conversation over coffee or something what your blood type is. You know, it's, it's something that, um, it's just, they're like, why mention it? A Jew is a Jew is a Jew. You know, like when I when I meet new Jewish people, I don't say hi. I'm Chavi. I converted. I am a Jew by choice. Um, I'm just Chavi, and I'm Jewish, and that's that. Um, the instance where it becomes necessary to reveal your conversion that you're a Jew by choice is, um, for me, it's usually three questions: um, Did you have a bat mitzvah? What did you grow up as? Are your parents religious? Those are the three questions that always, always come up in conversation, whether it's after, you know, a 30-minute conversation, a 5-minute conversation, or days and days and days of knowing someone. There are people who um, I know now who have no idea that I am a convert because it's never come up. You know, what can you do? Um, and I'm not just going to be like, oh, by the way, I'm a convert. Did you know? Um, and, and the reason for this, it's not... Like, this, this girl was worried that it's withholding information, that it's somehow keeping something from someone. But in reality, it's not, because once you convert, you're Jewish. There's, there's no, you know, you're just Jewish. There's nothing to it. Um, so why should you need to say? Um, for me, you know, when, when someone asks me a question, I say, oh, I didn't grow up Jewish. And then it creates a dialogue. It creates room for conversation or convert. Now, in other cases, um, I have a very good friend who's from... And she, you know, she told me when we were starting to become very good friends that, you know, if I were to go to shul with her and some nice, you know, Jewish boy was to see me and inquire about me or something, she would have to tell them immediately that I'm a convert. Why? Because I'm a convert via reform, I'm not a convert via orthodox. Um, you know, and then that's just, it would be, and, and I told her I was fine with it, that's okay. Like, in an instance like that, you don't want to mislead someone. And in that instance, if she told them I was Jewish, it would be misleading. And you know, just a case in point, um, I was at a Shabbat dinner at Chabad here. At one point someone said, you know, what did you grow up as? Because many of the people at the table had, um, were sort of Baal Teshuvot. Um, they were sort of coming back to their Judaism from growing up secular or reform. Um, and, you know, I said I wasn't born Jewish. And then the questions came, you know, like, how did you come to Judaism? Um, you know, how do your parents feel about it? How do your friends feel about it? What was the process like? How long did you study to convert? You know, all sorts of questions that created a really interesting dialogue, and they were curious. They wanted to know. They wanted to hear my story. And that's great. I love telling my story. I love telling people how I, how I discovered my Jewish soul. I don't really look at it as, like, I came to Judaism so much as I returned to Judaism. And I think that's the way converts really need to look at it. And I think it's important that if you're considering conversion, that you... you Go at it from that viewpoint. It's not like it's something completely foreign to your body and to your soul and to your mind. You're returning, you're returning your soul to Judaism. So I think that's, that's a good way to look at it. That's sort of my take on it. If someone, you know, if you convert and you, for a while you'll feel like, oh, I need to tell everyone. Should I tell everyone? Who should I tell? I'm starting in a new synagogue. Should I tell the rabbi right away? And, you know, in truth, it's your personal choice. If you want to, go ahead. But you are not required by Jewish law. You're not withholding anything if you don't go around telling everyone you're a convert. That's my spiel. Hopefully it made sense. Um, hopefully I'll be doing more video blogs about conversion topics. Um, and it's sort of like an introduction in a good way, I think, to what it means to be a convert, how to approach conversion, and, you know, most importantly, like, you know, the fact that once you convert, you're a Jew. You've always been a Jew. You're not Jewish. You are a Jew. Anyway, be well, Shavuot Tov, and I will talk to you all later.